brought you here on what's interesting. And uh, we've got Leslie here from, and JD, I know you've been here before. Leslie from Oakville, Ontario. Actually quite warm. Yeah, I think the Northern Hemisphere, we're kind of getting there now, aren't we? We've got, we've got, um, we might even be in summer now, I think, officially. Fingers crossed. Oh, best you and army. Oh, bless you and army. I really feel for you there. But I love, I love that you're seeing yourself moving through it and you're coming back from it already, which is great. Um, bless you. And you're in the right place. You really are. Keep keep listening to this conversation because there's something magical, I think, on the other side of it. So thank you, Anami, for sharing that. This this space, this insight cyber space to me is the space where you can you can share things and you you're safe to do that biggest I think there are some things that if we shared them in our traditional places that we share things maybe with friends and family but also perhaps on other electronic platforms social media and the like we we might not feel safe to do that um, but I think that's you know that's why I often share things quite personal things here I often get quite emotional here Um, I think that's just because it just feels like a, a lovely warm hug um, and I can see some more familiar faces down the bottom who I definitely feel hugged by. Um, that is the disadvantage of electronic stuff, and you can't actually have a real hug. Um, imagine if we all could actually have a group hug. That would be marvellous, wouldn't it? It would be really lovely. Um, but we can't do that, so we're here instead, connecting with each other in this marvellous way. On Insight Timer, so um, if you find this session helpful and you just generally want to give some love to Insight Timer or me, then of course donations are always welcome. So a little bit more about me to those people who are new, I suspect. Um, oh Jenny, that's so lovely. I just love that the love that you share in this space. It's so wonderful. So a little bit more about me. If you've not come across me before, you might want to know who's this strange woman. <laughs> um, so as I said near the beginning, my name's Claire Down and I'm known as the Queen of Calm. But I wasn't always that way. I became so stressed out, um, unknowingly, didn't didn't know I was stressed at all, didn't have a clue, knew nothing about stress. And also, I think I was a massive denier that that, that could happen to me. I, I don't get stressed. <laughs> I just thought I was above it in some way. How ridiculous. Um, and eventually I, I was stressed for such a long time that I burnt out um, quite thoroughly actually I didn't work for a year um at all I couldn't couldn't get back to work kept trying to go back to work but it didn't really work out very well each time I tried to go back um I had a great big you know went downhill again quite rapidly um I had adrenal burnout so I thought I had depression for a long time which wasn't particularly helpful um but I don't think I don't know what the medical services are like um in the US but here we don't really recognise burnout properly or understand it very well or adrenal issues in general unless you've actually got something like Addison's or something like that that does, you know, destroy your adrenals. So um, so I burnt out, didn't work for a year, resigned, started a business accidentally, went on a little bit of hypnotherapy training, thought this is interesting. And by the end of the training, I seemed to be starting a business and then the fun really did start because I tried to make myself be like what I thought all the other business owners were like, particularly, I think, in the male energy, like the hustle and the grind. And I'm not saying that that's how all men like to be, but it seems to be this kind of system where um, where we've, uh, we've got um, this kind of way of being that's very fast paced and moving and hustling and keeping on doing. And I bought into me needing to be like that, which led to me being very dissatisfied um, with myself and not feeling very good at all. And then trying to fix myself. I'll come back to you in a, in a minute, Anami. So I did everything, self-development, therapy, tools and techniques, daily rituals, try and get myself into the right state, you know, to do things. And was OK, but a bit kind of fed up, really, of trying all the different things. 
Um, so let me know in the comments if you're a person who's tried a lot of different things along the way. You won't be the only one here. <laughs> Pretty much guaranteed we've got 32 people here now. And I guarantee probably most most of us have been through this almost like self-development hamster wheel thing where we've just kept trying and trying and trying to feel better and, and found that it's not been particularly helpful. Um, or we've got a bit further, but then we can't really stop. We feel I've got to keep doing things, um, all sorts of different things. And then I came across this understanding called the three principles. So the three principles is a fundamental and very simple understanding of how the mind works. It helps us to understand our psychology in a very different way. Um, it helps us to become more aware of our psychology rather than being in the thick of it, believing that we are it. The three principles are thought, mind and consciousness. Um, where you know thought I'm sure you understand that one <laughs> uh, that's one probably one I'd talk about most but mind universal intelligence um, the power of the universe whatever you want to call it really um, and um, consciousness which we're really talking about today we're talking about how helpful it is um, to become more conscious and therefore get um, you know get access to more of our actual potential which is way beyond what we think it is so an army now we do have the technology so they are now if you go to my bio hopefully i'm just gonna have a look because the other day i changed something on my bio i've got it up now um and the link no you see the link's not being updated on if you go to meet me on a pc you you will get the new link for some reason when you i update my link on a computer it doesn't update on the app in me in fact it doesn't update at all unless i tell them so there is a new link now um on pen site and i can't share the link because you're not allowed to share links in these sessions if you message me i can probably send you the link but also i will go and um update it with um with the pen with the insight timer people because i've now got a pen site link which has got everything on it it's really easy to access booking a free hour um so you can get my freebie on there there's all sorts of other bits and pieces you can get you know people coming who aren't in insight timer can see the courses i'm gradually putting quick things that you can do um, with me on there and, and how you can connect to me and stuff so please um bear with if you can't get onto that through a PC, but there is a playlist on my YouTube channel. It's called Live Replays or something like that. And it's just got a couple on so far because the screen recording takes a while. Now today I'm trying it live, not re recording any of you lot, but I'm trying it live in the window. So well, I don't know what will happen. <laughs> it might have worked or it might not, I don't know. Um, I, it, it seems to be working, so we'll see. But if not, I have to leave it have to leave it streaming um and and you know let it run anyway we'll see fingers crossed it's working so but no i'm not recording the chat because that's not that's private to you um i'm just recording my 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 voice and my face so fingers crossed that will work but also an army there is tons of other stuff available that i have on insight timer so i have a couple of courses now um, I've got um, Calm, Balance and Clarity with Ease, that's my first course and that seems to be going very well and Revealing Your Full Potential with the Three Principles is really the course that is a deeper exploration of what we're sorting out, you know, what we're discussing in this month, in this month of June, we're looking at Revealing Your Potential, so today's, so today's event is, is part of that series of events. Um, I'm also I also regularly up tra upload tracks as well. So again, go to go and explore. The the issue is that the tracks that I'm recording on this topic will take a week or so to catch up because that's just how it works on the site. It just can take a bit of a while. So I think that's it. Intro wise. Um, Courses seem to be going well. I'm getting some nice, nice reviews for them. So I think people are enjoying them. There's quite a few people on both of them now, which is nice. Um, yeah, looking forward to um, to seeing some of you in there. And I think you can send me messages and things in there, which is really nice and connect to me a bit more. So 
awaken awareness for grace potential. So I think I think I didn't know for a long time that thinking was even a thing. It, it's I think there's a point at which we think that that voice is just us. I think for a long time, I, I probably most of my life actually, and maybe you can relate to this, I thought that that voice in my head was just me. Not that it was um, something other than me. I thought that was that was just it. I wasn't even that aware that there was this thing called thinking. It was just a voice that told me what to do, and I kind of did what it said a lot of the time. I had, I would say, probably virtually zero awareness that there wasn't that it wasn't just my instruction manual. I think that's what I thought it was. That the noise in my head, in terms of awareness of it, was just the instruction manual for my life, that it was just telling me what to do, step by step, you know, like, you know, like it makes me think about a recipe, um, you know, in a recipe, you have got to kind of follow the instructions, haven't you, if you don't, you won't get a cake or whatever it is you're trying to make, um, You've got to kind of follow, you've got to have all the ingredients and you've got to follow the steps, step by step. And I think I really related to my thinking like that. Well, it's just telling me what to do step by step. Do this, do that and do that and then do that. And as a as a as a, a real control freak, as I was at that time where I really did um, try to control the outside world for a long, long time. Um, I thought my thinking was really helpful in, in assisting me in doing that. So I'm quite an, I'm about to say, I was about to say I'm quite an organised person. I'm a ridiculously organised person to the point where it's probably one of the reasons why I burnt out, that I was trying to organise everyone and everything and, you know, organise, control, plan. They They were my things. Really quite liked that do very little of that now actually um but I did do it a lot but again I didn't have any awareness that I wasn't just living life right like for me that that was important as well that my thinking was right my way of doing life my way of doing everything from hanging the washing to I don't know all sorts of things was very much about me being right which meant that I didn't, I didn't take take criticism of me very well, <laughs> or even suggestions. I used to get quite huffy about things like that. But it also meant that I was very critical of myself. My poor ex-husband probably got the brunt of that, bless him, um, because I was very, very um, critical of him. I still am quite critical sometimes with Bruce, bless him. Um, those of you not being here before, Bruce is my fiance, and Trevor is my motorhome. So don't get the two mixed up. <laughs> it will sound very weird. So there's there's a level of, and I feel like like I don't really like awareness to be like a comparative thing. But I would say at that point I had zero zero awareness really of, and I, I will have had some awareness. But if we're going to kind of think about the journey that we might go on with becoming more aware, and how valuable that is in terms of accessing our potential from the position of realizing that our potential is not our thinking that that there's something so much more than our thinking that is available to us when we're not so much caught up in our thinking if that makes sense hopefully that makes sense so from that starting point i guess kind of the next phase of my my personal journey was around I guess some awareness coming from things like meditation so starting to so I'm sure most of the people in this room you're already further along that awareness journey than I was 
in that first phase um that you've got some awareness that there is this thing called thinking let me know in the comments if this is uh, resonating or let me know about your what your ideas about thinking is and awareness and how they kind of work together always good for, to hear from you um so so that next stage i suppose for me was around meditation so it was about observing because obviously often during meditation there's a um you know you're guided to i used to do quite a lot of guided meditation but you're guided to observe your thinking to to notice and perhaps noticing your your thinking being like clouds kind of floating across your head um or floating across that space inside your head <laughs> not actually floating across your head um and then I guess I still thought I still probably thought my thinking was right most of the time and, and I think I especially thought it was right when I was upset because it, because I think it really does it's really much harder to be aware of our thinking when we're upset or be aware that there is this thing called thought when we're upset isn't it because we're upset and now now i know from a three principles perspective that one of the you know one of the consequences of the three principles understanding is that our um our train of thought can sometimes completely disappear and and not be there anymore <laughs> Hello, Gary. Um, you're going to tell me something that you are any minute now, I think. Um, but I know that feeling when you type and then you press return too quickly to go back in and type again. Um, but that's a good distraction for me, Gary, because I've completely lost my train of thought. So if I like talk to you for a minute, hopefully whatever I was going to say will come flying back into my face. It's gone. I don't know where I was going. Where was I going with any of this? Yeah. Well, yeah, me too, Angie definitely none whatsoever no awareness it's all right you laughing at me gary but where's my train of thought <laughs> marky just dialing in <laughs> thanks marky yeah just dialing it look woman born in 1971 we used to dial in all the time that's what we did so there's still some of that stuff so we're talking about awareness today and how that can help you to reveal your potential and i feel like if i say the title again or the subject again, somehow my train of thought will <laughs> come washing back into my head. So I was talking about my journey with it. So yeah, meditation, becoming more aware, and then kind of getting a sense, but still really thinking I'm, I'm right, oh, that's where I was. And then really when I'm em when I was emotional, and when we're emotional, when we're upset, when we're angry, when when we're caught up in something, um <laughs> don't make me laugh because i'll lose it again jenny <laughs> is that when we're upset our our thinking looks even more true that's a clever but not very helpful trick of the mind that because actually our thinking is least true and least helpful when we're upset because it's it's not it's that's what that's what the upset feeling is telling us it's telling us that our um thinking is um out of kilter it's not helpful it's not true etc but when we're upset because we've got upset thinking our thinking looks more true does that make sense i feel like it's gone a little bit wobbly but but i know i kind of know where i'm pointing but of course you know with this understanding we're pointing at uh, fire with ice and sometimes the words don't quite Oh, thank you, Anami. Sometimes the words don't quite wrap around the uh, wrap around what I'm trying to say. Um, so, well, we've all done it, haven't we? Like, I'm sure you've all got examples. You know, when you're upset and you just can't think straight, can you? You, you just, um, well, Gary, bless you. I'm um, sorry to hear that. Hopefully this is a bit helpful, <laughs> even though I sound like a crazy person today. <laughs> um, 
you just you can't you can't think straight can you when you're upset so so what what is what does the three principles bring to this awareness thing it well first of all the understanding that thought is constructive not instructive did you remember earlier on i said at some point or and i think many of us have been through this phase or we are in this phase sometimes or we're definitely in this phase when we're upset our instruct our, our thoughts look like an instruction they look like the thing to do you know the next thing to say the next thing to do in our lives whatever it is it all looks like an instruction like like i said like making a cake next do the next do the next do the next and and the other thing that plays into that quite cleverly but again a little bit unhelpfully is that we're trying to manage our feelings it doesn't really matter what you're doing your system is wired to take you back to a nice feeling, back to calm, back to um, peace, back to whatever, you know, it, it, it's wired that way. That's how your system is wired. It wants you to be at peace. Now, the issue with that is, is that often there's like a layer of misunderstanding on that. And the layer of misunderstanding is that our feelings are coming from the outside world. So this is what happens. We feel upset. We think our feelings are coming from the outside world. So we, and then a thought appears, one of those that we think is an instruction. And we do that thing that the thought says with the hope that that will reveal, that will relieve the uncomfortable feeling. So an example of that, our child does something that we've asked them 75 times not to do. <laughs> is that just me then? <laughs> not just me, I know it isn't. <laughs> you know, our child does something, we've asked them 75 times not to do that thing. And we have this, you know, we have this emotional, angry reaction and we shout at our child. Now, in that moment... We couldn't have done anything else. We, we, we couldn't. We don't have another thought. The thought to shout, which all happens, obviously all of this happens like in a, in a blink. It, it happens really, really fast. But it looks like, it's almost like it's bubbled up and it looks like shouting will relieve the feeling. That That's, you know, so the it, that all happens very fast. Here's an angry feeling. There's a the words coming out of my mouth and that happens faster than you can, it really just happens faster than you can blink. And then afterwards, we, we kind of go, oh, probably could have handled that better. Probably not going to get our children to do as they're told. By sh I mean, I don't know what I'm saying, probably. Um, I was a bit of a shouter. My kids were little, not, not like really awful, but I did do a bit of shouting. Um, but um, it doesn't work, does it? I don't even notice. Nobody works well when a shout. <laughs> it just doesn't, doesn't work. And then and also, you know, child might be upset and crying. We'll probably be upset. I'd probably be crying because, as you know, I do cry a bit. Um, but, but none of that would actually be helpful. Um, so, but the, but the feeling is always telling us about our state of mind. And when we don't know that because we're not aware of that, then we are going to act on the feeling to try and make ourselves feel better. Um, Angie. So, okay, I, the, the body is always self-regulating, it, it, it does, it, you can't take that ability away. I know that a lot of teachings about trauma and PTSD will say that you can't, you can unlearn the self-regulation, but the self-regulation has got nothing to do with us at all. That's just an automated system. The issue is, of course, that we as humans get in the way. So what we've learned from our traumatic experiences is a way of reacting to the world. 
but it doesn't mean it doesn't make it any different to any other way of reacting to the world it's got the same constituent parts it's got the same formula it's thought in the moment a feeling that we misunderstand where it comes from and then a reaction as a result of that it, it doesn't change it's just a different flavor of the same thing we as human beings all form our experience in exactly the same way so for example if you're having a, a quite a you know a strong reaction to something um then knowing that that re reaction isn't a problem it's it's a way that humans work completely changes your reaction to the reaction if you see what i mean andrew so so it's it's not it doesn't the feelings might still come um yeah absolutely they do they do andrew it's not i'm not denying that people do but what i'm saying is that that is thought N not not this innate well-being system that we have which is so so powerful um and I, and I think, I don't know what you think, Angie, but I think fear of the feeling is the biggest thing. Fear of the feeling. If it, yeah, it's the awareness that the feeling isn't the problem. Like if we experience a feeling, let's take anxiety. I suspect many people here have experienced anxiety. Me too. When we experience anxiety, we... It's how we relate to that initial feeling of anxiety that creates more thinking about the anxiety being a problem, which then creates more anxiety, which then creates more anxiety, more thoughts, more anxiety. You know, it's like a layering up process, which eventually builds to the point where somebody is in full, you know, anxiety, you know, full anxiety attack, panic attack, whatever you want to call it. But it if imagine if you experienced an anxious feeling and you weren't afraid of it if you if you just related to it with a completely different awareness you were just aware but and noticing there's an anxious feeling like in reality feelings only rarely last 90 seconds they don't, they don't last longer than that they don't have they don't, they don't self-perpetuate the system self-writes the system self-writes except we start thinking things about the feeling and then the feeling perpetuates. I think everyone already is awareness, Angie. Like it's already there. That's part of us. It's who we really are. Um, and thinking hides it. And I think everyone has that potential. But of course, Angie, you're right. People have to be ready to look in that direction, but in this direction, but you know, I, I've gone through a long journey with this, with this, where I tried to change everybody. And now I'm here on Insight Timer because I know there are people here who are ready to see something different. And that's why I'm here um, with an aligned group of people. You know, I've spewed gallons of stuff out on social media. Gallons. <laughs> don't know if social media comes in gallons. <laughs> it's come in big gallon buckets anyway. I've spewed a lot of content out into the world. In fact, I had a call with a guy earlier who was phoning me about his daughter and he said, he said, you're all over the internet. <laughs> so I am. But, but this is the place where I know I'm with people who are already curious, who are already kind of going, hang on a minute. And that really is where we're looking at in this conversation and today especially with awareness is is you know awareness and curiosity literally go hand in hand they're like best buddies because first of all there's this hang on a minute hang on a minute claire's saying something it's a bit different to what people have said to me before i and i can and i can feel that there's something about it that's what I was like when I first came across this understanding. I was a bit like, hang on a minute. <laughs> hang on a minute. You mean I'm feeling my thinking? You mean there's nothing really wrong with me? Like it was, for me, it was quite a fast transformation. 
but it was definitely, I suddenly thought, I want to know everything I can know about this. Because I could very quickly see that it was powerful, what the teachers of this understanding were saying. So I'm going to break for a moment there, because we're just over halfway through, and just say hello to all the many, many more people who have come in to this session. Um, lovely to have you here. If you haven't met me before, I'd love to know um, whether you've been here before or whether you're a newbie. Today we're talking about awakening awareness for greater potential, because this the theme for me this month is is revealing your potential, and that is you know lots of events, and I'll tell you a bit more later about. Excuse me, <clears throat> that's why I keep drinking because my voice keeps going. Um, we're exploring potential this month in all the events and a new course which is called revealing your full potential with the three principles and i also have um another course called calm balance and clarity and peace and that's also that's also available um all on my profile along so the all information about me is on there and a, pro, a proof a, <laughs> on my profile um, there is a link there where you can find out loads more stuff about it. I've changed the link recently. So it is now live on the on the PC, but on the phone, it's still the old link. So bear with me. I will email. Um, I've just noticed that now because I've got the app open so that I can read the new events I've got coming up. But I've got the app open and it is now my link is still not right on the app. So um, if you're on a PC, you'll be able to connect to the right link, but I will get it changed. Um, so June. Um, brilliant. Oh, June, that is so following through on something you've been putting off. Oh, I can totally relate to that. Totally relate to that. I absolutely love that, June. Like noticing whether the thought that's stopping us doing something is just so powerful and just then just doing the thing. And I, I think what happens there, June, and, and you probably see this now, that other things will just get easier. Like you've you've stepped, comfort zone is a bit of an overused phrase, but you've stepped into a different version of June. There's a new June with a new June. It's June and June's new as well. Goodness gracious. It's you've stepped into a new June through doing that. There's now a new you on the block. I love that, June. Thank you so much for sharing. And, and hello, Eugene, a newbie. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Nice to meet you, Eugene, and I hope you do like the courses. This is mental health, this conversation. It is mental health. It's pointing you to your mental health, Eugene, which is innate and always there. And as we become more aware, we can see that more. Hello Gretchen, who's a newbie, and hello Pearl, what a beautiful name, who's a newbie too, hello, hello. Oh, Angie, you're first time here as well, fantastic. Love that. I love that you're joining in and asking questions, I love that. So if you are new to me, please do hop over and um, say hi on my profile, follow, my, follow me on my profile, on my bio, and on my bio there, there's a link. As I've just been saying, the link is right on the, um, the new link is live on the PC, but not on that. I don't know why it doesn't update on the app. And I can't update it on the app. So <laughs> I have to email them and say, the wrong link is there. I don't know why it doesn't translate across. It doesn't. I've had updated my profile before and then gone in and gone, why is the wrong profile on the app? And my new my new link is on the, my new profile is on the, uh, on the PC, but on the app. Anyway, I'm waffling now about apps and profiles. So if you are, um, yeah, let me know if you're new. We've got a few new people, fantasy. Let me know if you're a, a repeat offender, as we've started calling people who call me quite often. Um, which just was, again, how I, I share that because it's just so funny that the thoughts that come into your head when you're trying to find a bit of information. But being aware helps me to know that that doesn't mean I think you're criminals. It just means that I know my brain just comes up with things. So I don't have to judge that as being um, a problem or anything wrong with me. 
Um, yes, June, I know you're fantastic. I'm so glad you're here. And I love that you're sharing things that are, that are changing for you. So lovely. So for me, that this a big piece of the awareness is is that this thinking thing that we're becoming aware of that that isn't us. And 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 if you if you've even sat for five minutes and just observed the amount of utter tollywaffle, which I don't care if it's a made up word, I've made it up. We're going with it. It, it rubbish tollywaffle nonsense shenanigans that go through your go through this space if you just sit for five minutes and observe it like just observe it it's a load of old rubbish like it's 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 literally like you can imagine like a river flowing and somebody's just throwing random bits of stuff into the river and they're throwing some nice things like they're throwing some beautiful fresh mangoes and watermelons but they're also throwing like bits of rubbish and dog poo and god knows what like we, we don't have to pick up the dog poo i don't know why i've gone for dog poo in this but anyway now i'm gonna have to say dog poo loads of times but we, we don't have to pick up the dog poo we can just pick up the nice fruit we can just let all the other rubbish throw flow through and that's really what the awareness is and it's not change your thinking it's not any of that it's it's let go of what feels rubbish and and see that really you're the water anyway you're the flow you're not the stuff in the water you're this you know, if you think about the energy of a river It's, it starts off as this amazing little, you know, it starts off as many little streams, doesn't it, a river? Like up the mountain, and I go do quite a lot of walking, go up a mountain and there's a little stream trickling down. You just think, where does that end? Well, it ends up in the sea, obviously, at some point, probably. But it, loads of little streams and then they all join to the river and, like we're just part of that moving, flowing, organic thing. And we can sit by the river and observe the stuff that floats through the river. But that's not who we really are. And so the, the power. Oh, Pearl, absolutely. It does seem very convincing. But the, but the way to know is that it smells bad. A bit. We're back on the dog poo. Sorry, folks. We, we're on the dog poo. But it smells bad, or it feels terrible. And and the more we understand that, the more awareness we have that thoughts are felt. So rubbishy thoughts feel rubbish. Better thoughts feel better. Or I would say maybe. Thoughts that have extremes of emotion, you know, like, like, you know, that thing where, and this is not, if anybody here met somebody on holiday, married them and been married for 35 years, brilliant, I'm pleased for you. But most of like, you hear about people who get married to somebody they met on holiday, on holiday, like, <laughs> known them for two weeks, and they get married, and it does work out for some of them, but the, but the vast majority doesn't, because it, that's again, that's overexcited thinking, that's too too sort of too energized or too too much really it, it's not this kind of i don't know our our intuition which is what we're pointing to we're talking about our potential here we're talking about our intuition our guidance from the universe our connection to universal intelligence that just feels okay like it just feels okay it's not up there and it's not like that it's not like not it's not anything too ugh, you know it's not too much it's just like steady and quiet for me that's what it feels like oh jenny happy birthday Oh, well, I mean, you're supposed to pay for it, aren't you? I mean, that... 
Well, Jenny, you're you've got to live, honey. You, you know, going out and celebrating your birthday and having some wine and eating food that perhaps your body is now telling you wasn't a good idea. You must be, you know, only one of millions of people on the planet who do that. But also, like you're beating yourself up because you're beating yourself up. Please don't beat yourself up for beating yourself up, which I can hear a little bit of. Watch out for that. But don't we don't we know as well about consequences? And in the moment, to me, you did what made sense. And you had a lovely time. You know, you had a time out with friends, you ate delicious food, you drank some wine. And now you don't feel so good. But maybe it's okay. Exactly. Like it's okay and 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 the thought just but but what I love there, Jenny, is that you're observing the beating up. Just observe it. That's where your mind wants to go because it's trying to keep you safe. Not very cleverly, really, but <laughs> then our minds don't do any of that very well. It's trying to keep you safe. It's trying to stop you doing it again. You know, it, it's okay. Like all of that is okay. Going out and drinking and eating is okay. Feeling bad about it is okay. All of it's okay. It's just what you. Th it's just what your mind's doing at the moment. But just know that that's not who you are. And just observe it. Like I think for me, it's a bit like going from. You know, like when you have certain thoughts or behaviours and you're just like, oh, why am I doing that again? Oh, why haven't I stopped doing that yet? Why am I still beating myself up when I've when I've been out and oh, why am I not nice to myself and blah, blah, blah. You know, like, all oh, that, why am I not like that? And I should be able to do something about it. And I've been in spiritual conversations for goodness knows how long and I've listened to all Claire's sessions <laughs> so I should know better. Well, there's that. That's a way to kind of go with it. But there's also, oh, well, you know, here I go again. That's OK. That's just my, that's just what my mind does. Like, what was the thing that somebody said? I've got it written down, actually, because I'm going to do a session on it at some point. Somebody said something the other day and I just, I wrote it down because it was just so, it was on a podcast. Where's it gone? Yeah. Okay, so when, so the sentence is, when my mind, this is a lovely piece of awareness, when my mind is really upset, it talks about filling the gap. So Jenny, what does your mind talk about when it's really upset? What, what does your mind talk about? when it's upset well it sounds like your mind goes down a, a bit of a guilty path when you're really upset gary you too that's what your mind does when it's upset blames yourself and then beats yourself up it doesn't mean it's true it doesn't mean it's real it doesn't mean it's a problem it's just a habit when your mind's upset, it does that. When my mind's it's upset, upset, I rant. Mostly I'm upset with other people. I'm not often upset with myself these days. But then I am. Then, then I am, actually, because then I'm upset with myself, being upset with other people. <laughs> so that's what my mind does. My mind gets upset with other people and then does a little bit of, oh, Claire, you're the queen of calm. You shouldn't be upset with other people now. Why are you not able to let this go? Why are you just not... Why are you just not looking after, why are, you, why are you being critical of Bruce and blah, 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 blah. You know, that's what my mind does when it's upset. That's what my mind does when it's upset. We all have a little thing. We might have more than one thing that we do when we're upset. So that our mind does, not that we do, but that our mind just 
not likes to go down, but yeah, it kind of likes to go down certain paths when we're upset. Yeah, I, I loved it. When I heard it on this podcast, Anami, I was like, whoa, that's absolutely brilliant. Because I think that's an awareness question, isn't it? Like if we can notice what our mind has a habit of doing when it's, it becomes a bit more like, oh, well, you know, my mind just kind of does that. It'd be, it's a bit more like the energy of, oh, well, it rains a lot in England in the summer, although not today. <laughs> oh, Violet, I love that. 777. Absolutely love it. Thanks, Violet. That's so kind. I didn't even know you were here, my lovely. So good that you're here, though. Um, But that is just, that's just, just to look in that, look towards that question. We're, we're, what does our mind do? What's our little habit? And then to just be kind to ourselves about it. Like, especially for you, Jenny. I am not saying accept it, because that is a thing to do. But I'm saying in this space of awareness, acceptance can come through. As we become more aware that we have certain habits of thinking, this acceptance can come through. And then from that, there is this increase in, um, in our access to potential. So we've talked a lot about awareness, really, this session, but I think that's probably the most important piece of this. But the, the you know, that I think what happens is that as we become more aware, of our little patterns what, what I think happens is if when we're just in awareness rather than I've got to change this this positive thinking have to get rid of it make it go away do some affirmations whatever it is if we're just in this kind of awareness of it oh yeah there's Claire's mind it does these things there's Jenny's mind it's doing these things there's Gary's mind it does these things there's Nami's mind it does these things our minds just do these things. That's their, that's their, how they roll. Um, as we become more aware of that, and we realise that we don't have to do anything about it, what then happens is those thoughts just naturally turn up less. I used to think I had to do something about them all but you don't you don't have to do anything about them you can just observe them and just realize that when your mind is upset it does certain things and as the thoughts begin to dissolve what's naturally there is your potential and who knows what that is? Like, who knows how much that is? Who knows what's actually there? Like, if, I, I sometimes just ponder, like, the stuff that people have invented. Like, like even this amazing app. Um, wow. <laughs> you know, I can talk to people all over the world. And that I can screen record while I'm talking, that I can do all of these things that, that you know, thank you, Anami, that people can make donations from across the world um, in support of what I'm doing. And I can connect people with this, you know, this be in this beautiful heartfelt space. Like, that's just amazing, isn't it? And that came from somebody's... Like, like I'm 52, so I was born in 1971. I cannot, I could not have conceived that this would be a thing when I was 52. But somewhere, somebody did. And that's, that's this amazing potential. I think we can see it if we look at look at what humans have created. I, I'm not saying it's all good, by the way, what humans have created. <laughs> But it's all come from something, somewhere. 
Oh, thank you, Anami. I do hope so. I, I think that was probably one of the, just knowing I didn't have to do anything about it, any of it, was probably one of the biggest reliefs that I ever had, really. To know that I didn't have to do anything about it was just massive for me because that's I was spending so much time doing things about it trying to fix it trying to get rid of it trying to do something about it and it does it does it does bring relief I'm so pleased with mommy I'm glad you found that helpful and and that's why awareness is a superpower to me because it's actually all we need like, can you imagine just never having to do any self-development again? Any more therapy? Any more affirmations? Unless you really like them. <laughs> when I came across this understanding, I, affirmations were the third, first thing to go. I used to have them on a little recording and I like shout them in the shower and stuff. <laughs> I was so glad to stop doing them. Can you imagine that? Like I still love learning things and finding out about things, but it's all from this lovely place of curiosity now, not um, not with a sense that I need fixing. And all that I've done is is stay in this conversation, which hasn't given me any way to fix myself. It's just happened through through the awareness raising, really. And that does not mean, because I love what you've just said there, Jenny, to allow ourselves to be human. That does not mean I don't lose it. Doesn't mean I don't judge people. Doesn't mean I don't get out of bed the wrong side sometimes. You ask Bruce. <laughs> you all want Bruce on here, don't you? You can interview him and ask him about what Glenn's like in real life. Doesn't mean I don't like cry. Like Bruce and I had a right old um, fallout on, uh, is it Saturday or Sunday? Saturday, I think. <laughs> and um yeah and I end up crying and telling him I didn't think he loved me and it's all very dramatic but it's okay it's okay um Gary thinking about my overthinking makes me overthink my thinking oh Gary me too <laughs> so so much absolutely yeah try not to think too much about your thinking and, and unless you are and then if you are it's okay you know, it is it is because, you know, because when we're upset, our mind does certain things. Like for you, Gary, when you're upset, you, you overthink. Um, and then you try to analyse your overthink. Like it's it's just, that's just what your mind is in the habit of doing. And it's just, it's not trying to change. It's just seeing it different. It's just seeing and going, oh yeah, Gary's mind does that thing. There goes Gary again. You know, I kind of talk about yourself in the third person. <laughs> there goes Claire again with her. Um, it's gone from, for me, it was like, oh my God, why am I doing that again? No, 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 I shouldn't be doing that. I've got to do some positive thinking or an affirmation, man. And now it's just like, oh, well, you know, Claire's doing that thing that she does again. You know, it's not particularly helpful. Can we, can we kind of look at it or whatever? But not, it, it's just got a totally different energy when we're coming from this place of awareness that thinking does stuff. But when we're upset, our thinking does something. I love that, June. Oh, that's beautiful, actually. Yeah, allowing yourself to imagine it. It's beautiful. So, um, very exciting. We've got to 92 people in the room. That's very lovely. I do like it and we've got some people. It's been lovely this session and thank you so much for everybody who's participated. Thank you for all the donations. They are lovely and very grateful to anybody else who's able to make a donation today. And um, it's always much, much appreciated. So um, we've only got like a minute or so to go and I'm going to try and finish on time because I've got a client at 6 p.m. at the Street and I need to eat before that moment. So um, I'm just going to... Oh, it says I've got 1.1k followers. Yay! It's exciting. Um, so, lives for the rest of the week. Are you ready? Hopefully, if you've already gone to my profile and followed me, you'll know all about this. But if you haven't already done that, please go to my profile and then you'll be able to see the lives I've got coming up. 
So tomorrow morning at 9.15 a.m. BST, embrace the unknown and step into the realm of possibilities. I love talking about the unknown. Such fun. I enjoy that. Um, June 7th, which must be Wednesday. I don't know what day of the week it is at the moment. Most of the time. We've had too many bank holidays in May in the UK. Oh, thank you so much, Gary. That's really kind. Thank you so much. Uh, 3.50 p.m. BSD on Wednesday. End self-sabotage. Anybody a, a, a self-sabotager? <laughs> oh, Jenny, I don't think it did. But that doesn't mean it's not there, Jenny. So maybe don't do it again. Because sometimes they don't show up here. And then they don't, they, they, they show up. No, it didn't, Jenny. But d maybe don't do it again. Or do it later. Because it... it they don't always show up and then they no, it didn't. They, did, they don't always show up until afterwards, some of them. So I will do. I will do, Jenny. Bless you. Thank you. Um, so where are we on? 7th, that must be Wednesday. You're with end self sabotage. 8th at 8.05 a.m. And this is all BST because that's because I'm in the BST time zone. Accessing effortless. effortless. Accessing. No, it's not coming out. Accessing effortless flow and creative potential. And then Friday lunchtime, which was quite a lot, lot of popular slot on Friday. First time I did it at lunchtime. 12.45 because I've got other things on in the morning. The power of presence revealing potential in the now. So there we go. And don't forget courses revealing your full potential with the three principles and calm, balance and clarity with ease. Um, next month. Hmm, I, I do get a lot about procrastination, so I think it's going to might be productivity next month. I haven't quite decided yet. It'll soon be here. And there are loads and loads of tracks, loads of tracks, right back from when I first started coming on here. So please do, please do go have a look at that. And as I said earlier, the link on my bio is not the right link. It's a great link. Please do go on that link. Um, yeah, I am now, I have now worked out, Sue how to um, screen record. So hopefully they will be appearing gradually on my YouTube channel. And the link to that is on the new link of my pen site link, which should be on my profile. I'm gonna email them straight after this and say it's not there. And hopefully they'll sort that out. They did last time, it didn't work. Cause I upload it on the PC and then it doesn't show on the app. So um, yeah, so some of the sessions you will catch. So the evening one on Wednesday, the Wednesday one is in the evening. And the Friday one is probably for people who are up fairly early in the US because it's 12.45 p.m. So lots of love. I'm mixing up different times. So there'll always be at least a couple of sessions that are US time suitable. And then there'll be some other sessions that pick up other time zones. So I want to share myself out, you see. So thank you so much, everyone, for being here. And thank you so much for the donations, everyone. Lots and lots of love today. I hope you found that helpful. Please do hop over and follow me and get to know me better. And and you know, the, there's a link now on the link on the link. There's now places to book an hour with me if you want to have a conversation, explore this further, um, and you think you might want to, you know, find out more about working with me. You can do that too. So lots of love. Take care, and I will see you soon. Thank you so much.